the major mistake that everybody makes is waiting. Waiting for somebody to pick you. Waiting for the right time. Waiting for you to feel motivated. It's not coming. For the big stuff, for the hard stuff, it requires a push, always has, always will. Nobody is coming to save your ass. It is up to you. And so if you want to change anything about your life, stop sitting around and wasting your goddamn life and start pushing yourself. Whether it's a fast or it is starting a business or it is changing how you talk to your spouse or it's changing the kind of parent that you are, you got one life. And all you need to do is turn on the freaking news and see the kind of that's going on in this world. It's both amazing and terrifying. You never know when your time is up. But I do know that you've got time right now to change things. And so the thing you should change is you should take 100% responsibility for your future. You should decide what is it that you really want your life to look like because you only get one of them and it's not going to start again. But you could start building your future right now. And that begins the moment that you realize that you're never going to feel like doing the things that are hard. You're never going to feel like stepping out of your comfort zone. And the second that you do, the second that you push through, you win. You win because you see yourself becoming the kind of person who takes action. You see yourself believing in your ideas. You see yourself disregarding your own excuses. That is the source of confidence. It's the willingness to try. It doesn't start with belief. It starts with the push. So do yourself a favor and stop thinking about all this stuff and stop commenting and push yourself. Do something. It is what it is. You know, we, we, we talk about overcoming objections. A lot of times we don't know exactly what those objections will be. And sometimes they can come up and it can become so overwhelming that, wow, we didn't anticipate that. We didn't know. But we just, you gotta still aim to do and still believe and recognize that there are things that are. It's always worth it to do your best and to believe in something and to work towards the attainment of the goal. And if it is, that you have to expand your vision, then you climb higher and you do that and you don't be afraid to do your best. There are times in life we feel like we're going in circles. We're doing the right thing, but not making much progress. We don't see anything changing. It's easy to lose our passion and get discouraged. But one test we all have to pass is being faithful when nothing new is happening. We're just going to work, raising children, coming home, doing the same thing again. It's easy to be our best when we're getting good breaks, things are falling into place. That doesn't take much faith. But what about when you're working hard but not getting the credit? You're being your best, but your marriage isn't improving. When you're faithful in the routine, something is happening that you can't see. Your character is being developed. And the routineness of life is not exciting, but it is necessary. You won't become all you were created to be without being your best when it's mundane. Being excellent, having a good attitude, when it's just another ordinary day. Nothing exciting is happening. You're just singing in the choir another Sunday, going to work with a smile another week, doing the right thing with a good attitude another month. You could see it as boring. When is this going to change? But you understand this principle, you're being prepared. When you're faithful in average days, then you will see exceptional days. But sometimes we're frustrated because we know we have more in us, but we're not seeing it happen. We don't understand why we're not making progress. Be faithful in the routine. What's in your future is going to be more rewarding, more exciting than anything you've imagined. Now I'm challenging you to stay faithful in the routine.
As Michelangelo said, if people knew how hard I worked to achieve my mastery, it wouldn't seem so wonderful after all. And that's the thing about getting great. That's the thing about being an artist of such caliber that you're remembered for hundreds of years after your death. It is back-breaking work. It is a blinding amount of effort. It isn't about natural talent. That myth that some people are born with something that we celebrate so much is just that, a myth. You're born a lump of flesh. You can't hold your own head up. You may have predispositions, but that is a long way from actually crafting your ability until the point where it looks like magic. And that's the beauty of artistry, isn't it? That it's so unbelievable that you're more willing to believe that it was God-given, that they were anointed with it, than that they just worked their ass off. But the truth is, every one of the greats, no matter how much natural talent they were born with, they're remembered because they worked. They are remembered because they did so much work. Because in that work is hardship. In that work is difficulty. In that work is unbearable adversity. But it's in that adversity that the magic happens. And as Victor Hugo said, adversity makes men. Prosperity makes monsters. So I know right now you wish you'd been born with some talent. You wish that all those dreams that you had, they were yours for the taking, that you didn't have to put blood, sweat, and tears into it, that somebody would hand you at least something in the beginning, that they would give you some start, some spark. That's where the monster's created. If you really want to get hard, if you really want to get tough, if you want to get great, if you want to be unfucking touchable because no one can bend or break your vision of yourself, then you have to suffer. That's the way of the world. And as Florence Nightingale said, I attribute my success to this. I never gave or took any excuse. And that's the secret. At the end of the day, if you know what you want, it's only a question of whether you're willing to pay the price to get there. So ask yourself, are you willing to pay the price? to talk to you today about staying committed. We all have opportunities to give up on what we're believing for, walk away from an uncomfortable situation, slack off, not be our best. But if you're going to reach your highest potential, you have to stay committed. You can't be moved by what's not working out, give up on a child because he's not doing what he should, slack off at work, because you're not being treated right. You have to have a made up mind that you are in it for the long haul. It may be difficult. You have a good reason to walk away. Don't take the easy way out. Stay committed to your marriage. Stay committed to raising those children. Stay committed to your friends. They may make mistakes. Give them some grace. Don't be a fair-weathered friend. Be committed in the good times and the tough times. Stay committed to your job. Be a loyal person, somebody they can count on day in and day out. You're not always going to feel like it. There will be good days and tough days. Times when it's exciting, times when you feel like giving up. That's when you have to dig your heels in and say, I'm going to do the right thing when it's hard. I'm committed to this marriage. I'm going to love you even though you don't deserve it. I'm committed to this job. I'm going to be my best even though my supervisor isn't treating me right. I'm committed to my dreams. But too many people are wishy-washy. They'll love you as long as you perform perfectly. If not, they're out of there. They'll be their best if you keep them encouraged, keep them propped up. They'll pursue a dream as long as they're getting good breaks. Their commitment is based on things going their way. But when it's difficult, when it's taking longer than they thought, they get discouraged, start to slack off. Well, they don't pay me enough. I'm undervalued. If they would pay me more, I would do more. 
But if you don't pass the test of being your best where you are, showing up on time with a good attitude, doing more than you have to, well, Joel, it's difficult to stay committed to my job, committed to my marriage, committed to this dream. Nothing's going my way. If it was easy, everyone would do it. I've heard it said, on the road to your destiny, halfway through, every person will be tempted to give up. Some turn around and go back. The others stay committed and keep moving forward. What's interesting is both people travel the same distance. One goes halfway back to where they started. The other goes halfway ahead and reach their goal. Committed people outlast the difficulty. Committed people stick with a relationship even though they have a right to walk away. Committed people go the extra mile and do more than they have to. 1960, a young man opened a pizza place in Michigan. He was an orphan that had been raised in a Catholic orphanage. He borrowed $900 and started this small pizza place. He had all kinds of bad breaks. A business partner got into his account and stole several thousand dollars, his life savings. 1968, a fire burned his building down. The insurance company paid him a penny on the dollar. He could have gotten discouraged, thought this is not meant to be. But this young man stayed committed to the dream. He had an idea. Instead of people having to come get their pizza, he decided to take the pizza to the people. He came up with the first delivery service. He called it Domino's. He started with one restaurant, $900. Today, there are over 6,000 Domino's. A few years ago, Tom Monaghan sold his company for a billion dollars. He's incredibly generous. He helps underprivileged children around the world. Stay committed. Keep doing the right thing. You can't see it, but up in front of you is a double portion. Stay committed to your dreams. Stay committed.